بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ہیلو ڈیئرس وی آر ہیئر وتھ نیو لیکچر لیگزیکل ریلیشنس ان دا فیلڈ آف سیمینٹکس اٹ از آلسو کالڈ سینس ریلیشنس اٹ از ون آف دا امپورٹنٹ ٹاپک آف سیمینٹکس اسٹارٹ وتھ دا لیکچر وٹ از لیگزیکل ریلیشنس Relationships, synonymy, antonymy, metonymy, and so all concern the paradigmatic relations of an expression, the relation which determine the choice of one lexical item with another. In the construction of any utterance, the speaker is typically confronted with a choice between various lexical items. Kitchen is a meronym of restaurant. Often is the antonym of rarely many is in the context a synonym of numerous and sushi is a heponym of Japanese food. Now, lexical relations are sense relations. We know that every lexeme, every word in a language has a semantic relation, a meaning relationship with another lexeme or another word because of semantic field, because meanings are related. This relationship, which is based on meaning, between words, between lexemes are called lexical relations. These relations in the meaning can be opposite, it can be similar, it can be any. Synonymy, antonymy, hyponymy, these are different types of relationship. Let's explain antonymy relationship. Antonymy, as everybody knows, antonyms. Speakers of English can readily agree that words like good, bad, love, hate, in, out, are opposite are antonyms. The notion of oppositeness involved here seems to cover several different types of relations. In general, however, antonymy may be characterized as a relationship of incompatibility between two terms with respect to some given dimension of contrast. Some words seem to have more than one antonym depending on the dimension of contrast involved. Girl has both boy and woman depending on whether the distinction of contrast is sex or age. Sweet has both bitter and sour. Now, antonymy is the relationship that shows oppositeness in the meaning of two or more than two words. And this antonymy, this oppositeness has many dimensions. In the case of age, boy has the opposite of uh, man. In the case of sex, boy has the opposite of girl. So, Antonymy is oppositeness of meaning bases on different words without obvious antonyms. There are words that have no obvious antonyms. Not every word has an obvious antonyms. Library of and corresponding are these cases for which there is no obvious relevant dimension of contrast and for which antonyms are consequently hard to identify. And even where an obvious dimension of contrast does exist, antonyms are not always available. Angry, for instance, does not have any obvious antonym in English, even though we can easily conceive of the scale of arousal and calmness to which it belongs. Now, this is very clear. Library of corresponding and so many other words, they do not have obvious antonyms because they do not have relevant dimension of contrast with other words. This is a simple activity for you. Write and comment at least five words for which you think that there is no obvious antonym. Let's go further. There are two types of antonyms, non-gradable antonyms and gradable antonyms. In antonymy, the principal distinction we have to make is between gradable and non-gradable antonyms. Non-gradable antonyms are antonyms which do not demit admit a midpoint such as male female pass fail assertion of one of these typically entails the denial of the other thus if someone is female they are necessarily not male and if someone who has failed an exam has necessarily not passed it gradable antonyms however like hot cold good bad seems to be more common than non-gradable antonyms now these are two different types of Antonyms, gradable and non-gradable. Look at one, male and female. If something is male, it is not female. If someone is pass, he is or she is not fail. 
this is one type of antonym gradable antonyms like hot cold good bad seem to be more common than non gradable now look at gradable antonym a gradable pair of antonyms names points on a scale which contains a midpoint in non gradable antonyms we do not have a midpoint but in gradable we do have thus hot and cold are two points towards different ends of a scale which has a midpoint lexically by adjective like tepid which is used to refer to the temperature of liquids which are neither hot nor cold but someone in between a consequent of the fact that gradable antonyms occur on a scale is the fact that they are open to comparison thus we may say that one drink is hotter than another and other and that some water is less cold than another now there is gradable antonyms can make degrees of adjective for example fast faster and fastest slow slower and slowest for fastest we have slowest for faster we have slower these are gradable antonyms in, in non gradable antonyms we do not have a midpoint we do not make comparative or superlative degrees for example live and dead we cannot say more live and more dead because those are non gradable antonyms now the activity is again very simple list 10 gradable antonyms and five non gradable antonyms pair gradable of which you can make degrees and non gradable of which you cannot make okay look at auto antonyms there is another category a certain number of words in english which have more than one meaning can be given descriptions which make them seem auto antonyms i e their own opposites thus temper means both to harden and to soften temper harden and soften clue means both stick together and force apart and sanction means both to approve and to censor furthermore there are many denominal verbs for putting in or taking out things which show similar auto antonymy to string a bee versus to string a violin these are two different in its own self murphy points out that contextual factors limits the risk of confusions in many of these cases if you temper your comments you are softening it not making it harder whereas tempering metal can only refer to hardening it so temper is an auto antonym because its meaning are contrast in one case it means harden in the other case it means to soften it is very easy to understand auto now we have two other relationships that is meronymy and holonymy holonymy and meronymy these are two different things look at meronym meronymy it is a greek meros part is the relationship of part to whole hand is a meronym of uh, arm seed is a meronym of fruit blade is a meronym of knife conversely arm is the holonym of hand fruit is the holonym of seed now these are two different things try to understand not all languages seems to have an unambiguous means of translating the phrase part of but meronymy is never this often eat the origin of various policy be patterns what is policy be where a single word has more than one meaning and an important lexical relation for the reason meronymy and hol holonymy these are two different things one pen okay we, we if we say a part is a meronym of the whole but the whole is a holonym of the part if he, if a hand is the meronym of arm then arm is the holonym of hand not all languages have this type of relationship they use the phrase of part of but it is a very important lexical relation we also see that there are many words in languages they have polysemic nature they have more than one meaning in a language if you look at the dictionary you can see a word and you can see different meanings of a single word and it is called polysemy 
what is hyponymy it is again very simple hyponymy is a relationship in which the meaning of one word is included in the meaning of another word for example the meaning of rose is included in the meaning of flower or the meaning of boy is included in the meaning of male or the meaning of main is Im included in the meaning of human it is a kind of hierarchical relationship let's see hyponymy greek hypo under is the lexical relation described in english by the phrase a kind of a sort of something a chain of hyponyms define a hierarchy of elements sports car is a hyponym of car Saying a sports car is a kind of car. In turn, car is a hyponym of vehicle because vehicle is a kind. Uh, car is a vehicle of a kind of vehicle. Other examples of hyponym in hierarchical hierarchy includes look at blues, jazz. It is music. Sky parka parka. It's a jacket. Look at commando soldier member of armed forces. Look at martini cocktail and then drinks and paper bag and book. these are different relationship of words hyponymic relationships the easiest one is if someone is commando he is a kind of soldier if someone is soldier he is a person of a member of armed forces martini is a kind of cocktail and cocktail is a kind of drink blues is a kind of jazz and jazz is a kind of music this is high then synonymy when the meaning of two and more than two words are similar but not exactly the same look a given word or phrase is accepted as having the same meaning as another word or phrase if its substitution for other in the given context yields an utterance which they will accept as having the same meaning as the first utterance this is a standard definition of look it has often been suggested that english is particularly rich in synonyms for the historical reason that its vocabulary has come from two different sources from anglo-saxon on the one hand and from french latin and greek on the other hand that's why we do not we do have many synonyms because one word is taken from anglo-saxon the other is from greek and the other is from latin and both these three words suppose have similar meanings we call it synonyms there is an issue there are no real synonyms no two words have exactly the same meaning it would seem unlikely that two words with exactly the same meaning would both survive in a language if we look at possible synonyms there are at least five ways in which they can be seen to, to differ now try to understand this point there are no real synonyms because if we have two words and they have exactly the same meaning then why do we have two words why don't we ignore one if we have synonyms it means that they have similar meanings but there is a small tiny difference in their meaning they are not exactly the same we cannot replace it with each other we can't replace a reply with answer because both are synonym but both do not have exactly the same meaning now look at different five ways in which you can differentiate synonyms Uh, this is very important to know why there are synonyms there are five reasons we can say there are five english words in different dialects for example fall and atom one way cow shit cow house buyer hashtag herek hebau these are different things tef fasad faset and spigot and then words in different styles and registers smell pernicious effluvium horrible sting gentleman man chap pass away die pop up now look at these two ways in which synonyms are there one type is if we have different dialects in a language that's why sometimes we have different two different vocabulary items for a similar meaning look we have american dialect and british dialect in english language in one we have fall and in the other we have art the meaning is the same then words in different styles and register we also know that in one uh, in language there are different styles formal style and informal style in formal we use one word for one meaning but for the same meaning we will use another word in informal language the same way we have registers in 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 languages we have medical register legal register the use of language according to profession 
then in one profession one word might mean one thing in the other profession the same meaning might possess another word for example we can easily say uh, when the doctor says pass away they say expired we say pass away or die because of the register they call it pill we call it tablet then the third one is different in emotive or evaluative meaning for example state statesman and politician hide and conceal thrifty and economical stingy fascist and liberal then we have another type of antonomic uh, synonymic relationship that is based on collocations the word they go together uh, they may be called true synonyms they occur in different environments for example look at rancid occurs with bacon and butter but addled with eggs and brains the meaning is the same both are you know expired things when we say the bacon is expired we say rancid bacon butter but when we say egg egg is expired we we say that it is adult egg or adult brain fine these are collocation because rancid collocate with bacon and adult adult so he collocates with eggs then we have policy mean same words have a set of different meanings such words are called polysemic words dictionary meaning of flight might give you so many things for example when you search flight and you can see the meaning of passing through the air power of flying air journey unit of air force volley digression series of steps this is what the nature of english language and many languages are that one word that possess they possess one word might possess several meanings and this type of relationship is called for. then we have homography and homophony it is very easy to understand these two when verb and when noun are split in the same way spelt in the same way but pronounced differently they are called homographs because their written form is the same spelling is the same but their pronunciation is different now look at sight and sight right and right are spelled differently but pronounced in the same way they are called homoform identical forms different origin okay wind and when sorry let's begin homograph spelling same pronounce difference homophone phone same my meaning uh, means sound the same and spelling different look two different things spelling same sound same yes, uh, spelling same pronunciation different it is homograph spelling different pronunciation same homophone sight sight pronunciation is the same but the spelling is different it is called homophone but why and when spellings are the same pronunciation is different it is called homograph they are given separate entries in dictionary they are identical form same origin might be they are polysemic in case of polysemic they are given single entry in a language sorry look uh, in these uh, categories lexical relation the one we have just discussed the meaning overlaps with each other why because of the semantic field because of the semantic features because words in a language i told you earlier they are they are related with one another because of their meaning relationship loose sense of synonymy uh, we have already talked about that there are no exactly the same meaning uh, words same synonyms exploited by dictionary makers dictionary they present lexemes in different ways mature adult ripe perfect you look at these things govern direct control determine require lose now these are different ways dictionary they put words together what is metaphor another lexical relation and the traditional view of metaphor which goes right back to aristotle metaphors are principally seen as a matter of especially literary keep in mind usage it is literary usage on this understanding metaphor asserts a resemblance between two entities thus the metaphor the holiday was a nightmare work because it asserts a resemblance of similarity between a holiday and a nightmare understanding the meaning of the metaphoric metaphorical utterance involves identifying things which 
holidays and nightmare might hold in common such as being unpleasant holidays sometimes unpleasant so the nightmare is unpleasant metaphors like this are no more then isolated usage which can only be discussed in a case by case basis we should not expect there to be any significant generalization about metaphorical usage because it depends on the literary writer or on the user of a language the the, the association he makes between two words can be very much subjective suppose the concept of one thing and the other thing we do not refer it we make a kind of association in metaphor between two concepts now there is another lexical relation metonymy another important structural relation is the relation of metonymy in traditional rhetoric metonymy is the figure of speech based on an interrelation between closely associated terms cause and effect relationship possessed and possessive relationship and a host of possible others the common element in metonymy is a notion of contiguity the things related to a metonymy can be understood as contiguous by to neighboring each other either conceptually or in the real world here are some examples masco has rejected the demands the kettle is boiling the cinema complex has seven screens i saw the doctor today my bags were destroyed by the customs now in 4a we understand what masco refers to the russian government in 4b it isn't the kettle itself but the water is boiling in 4c the cinema is not claimed to just have seven screen but the speaker means that it has seven separate auditoriums each with its own screen in 4d the speaker does not mean that they just saw the doctor they mean that they consulted the doctor in 4e it was not just the bags but the contents as well which were destroyed by the now what is the difference between metonymy and metaphor notice the difference between metonymy and metaphor in metaphor there is a relation of mapping between two concepts with the structure of one concept nightmare unpleasant being imposed to another holiday boring metonymy do not serves to structure one concept in terms of another it is not possible to articulate the detailed mapping we establish in the love and obligation cases instead they draw on the association within a single conceptual domain allowing one part to represent another collocation simply linguist in the books they refer to it is a word is known by the company it keeps a collocation is two or more words that often go together these combination just sound right to the native english speaker or to every language speaker if they use their collocational phrases they seem natural to them who use them all the time the speakers the natural speakers they they think it is quite natural to the language look at combinations now there is a very important thing other combinations may be unnatural and just sound wrong if you make your own combinations it will be very much subjective because they are not used in a language oftenly collocation is a set of phrase that is used many times so many times that it becomes a set phrase in a language look we have a collocation with have have a bed have a drink have a good time but take take a break take a chance take a look with break break a habit break a lick break a promise look at these are break collocate with habit with lick with promise take with break take with chance take with look these are collocations we have grammatical collocations in which we say he with goes and they with go because they collocate the the last but not the least is the idiom it is a kind of lexical relation one special point category of non compositional phrases idiom for example if we say that so and so has thrown in the towel most english speakers will recognize that we are not talking about anyone literally throwing but that we simply mean that the person is in question has given up or whatever venture is being spoken about this phrase is not compositional it is not composed since its overall meaning does not derive from the meanings of its individual component axioms in simple words idioms are phrases 
are words metonymy combination of words another important structural relation mean. is the relation of metonymy metaphor in traditional rhetoric in metonymy is the figure the of speech based of on an interrelation between closely Thank you associated so terms listening to the lecture cause and effect relation if you have any question relation, you can ask of other in the comment section relations. below please the common like, element in the metonymy and share the notion of contact with you